Good morning, Michael. Good morning, Tony. How are you? So, I'm really well. A little bit cold out here on the yes. uh, last day of January. Yeah. Now, I don't know if you realise this, but um, in two days' time, on the 2nd of Feb, it's the International Day of Consecrated Life. And uh, I think it would be good to share something about the reality of consecrated life as Marist. Probably the best way would be my own experience mm. of it. Uh, uh, having come into the Marist world from the corporate world, my experience was, was with Marist brothers, mm -hmm. Marist brothers experiencing their consecrated life. And I think the, th the thing that, that hit me the most in the early days was the sense of people walking with me. Mm -hmm. People walking with me, the the brothers that I had occasion to work with, uh, it was never a case of instructions given from a distance. It was them walking with me, uh, and that's always struck me as an important part of, of the consecrated life. Okay, this idea of accompaniment. Accompaniment. Okay. The, the brothers have that word for it. My experience of it yeah. was coming out of a corporate world where instructions were given, orders mm. were given. Mm. Yeah, they were strong. They were strong instructions. But let me walk with you. Okay. It's not working for the brothers, but working with the brothers. With. Okay. There's there's a there's a belief that um, consecrated life is just about religious life. Uh, brothers and sisters and religious priests but there's also another school of thought that consecrated life is for all the baptized do you see yourself as a consecrated man through your baptismal vows indeed um, and that that view that consecrated life is someone who has taken vows is an easy to explain and easy to understand mm. concept of consecrated life but if I look at the richness that I experience in the work that I'm now invited to do in the Marist world, mm. it is a consecrated life that I lead mm. through my baptism and through subsequent sacraments as well that uh, have been in my life mm. and, and that seeking God in what I do. Yeah, that's, that's brilliant because I think it's quite a, a, a new reality where our lay colleagues have uh, to embrace this sense that they too are consecrated. A as a religious brother, uh, it's quite obvious through our vows of poverty, chastity, and obedience, as stated in the Constitution. It's it's very well understood yes. in the in the history of religious life. Mm. But I think that with this sense of new beginning, uh, we need to embrace this sense of Marist life, brothers and lay that we do share something in common, expressed in different lifestyles. I really like this quote by a guy called Israel Zangwill, that mm. it takes two people to make one brother. Um, what, what's your understanding of that? That, that is beautiful. Yeah. Uh, you cannot be a Marist brother alone. I cannot be a brother in the family sense alone. And the important part there is it takes two people to make one brother, mm. not two brothers to make one brother, it's two people, it's yeah. including the, the wider Marists of Champagne to enable the brothers to be the brothers that they are. And, and I fully uh, appreciate the presence of the lay Maris and my lay friends to help me understand the significance of religious life, yeah. that my friends who are married have children help me understand the vow of poverty, chastity, obedience, much more. Uh, recently, uh, Pope Francis had a wonderful comment about uh, consecrated life. The consecrated life frees our affections of every possession in order fully to love God and other people. And I really appreciate this idea that for me, my consecrated life is to be liberated from the affection of material possession. We call that the vow of poverty. But I also like this idea of freeing myself from the affection of the possessive power and authority. For me, that's obedience. And I also like this idea of being freed from the affection of the possessive relationships. And for me, that's, that's chastity. Um, 
I, I really like this concept that to see Christ in my life, uh, I recognize other people's faces. Is, is that a reality that you can connect with? Indeed. Um, you, you talk of, of the, the three vows that are taken, and as you're speaking, I'm, I'm thinking of my situation mm. where my chosen life has been one of intimacy with mm -hmm. my wife, um, which doesn't preclude the being on your own. Not lonely, but the solitude mm. of, of making space for, mm. for Christ to come in and be with you. And I was, as you were speaking now, I was thinking of uh, that beautiful visual from the general chapter with the faces of Christ. Mm -hmm. And I count myself as, as blessed that each day I, I see my wife and in her face uh, I see the face of Christ. I see Christ with me in everything that I do in my intimate relationship uh, with my wife. And then that tends to open the day that you're seeing Christ's face in the people that mm. you're talking to, walking with, mm. encountering. Mm. And another point that you made, the, the point of power and obedience, the vow of obedience, that was, uh, for me, was a mind-opening experience coming into the Marist world out of the corporate world where power is exercised very often for all the wrong reasons mm. and in all the wrong ways. And at that point in my life, I, I was at odds with much in my Catholic faith and my Catholic church. And to discover the Marist Marian face of our charism, where Mother Mary doesn't, doesn't put herself across as overpowering, as, as unkind, as ruthless. Mm. She's a very, very, if we have to use the word, powerful woman, mm. but it's shown in gentleness, in kindness, in mm. sensitivity, but never stepping away from, from what has to, has to be done, has to happen. For, for me, that echoes why I love being Marist. Mm. This idea of Mary being the figure of authority who is invitational, who's gentle and strong. And like the wedding at Cana, just told Jesus, you know what you have to do. Yeah. And, uh, and I think that for us, uh, we recognize something of mutual uh, value, that we lead a life consecrated to God through the intimacy of married life mm -hmm. and preferred solitude and of uh, community life and prayer, um, not exclusive from not each exclusive. other. So on this day of the International Day of Consecrated Life, we could really celebrate both as brothers and lay people uh, that we lead life consecrated to something bigger than ourselves. Indeed. The charism is a gift to the brothers, accepting it in the way a Marist brother does. And more and more, there are Marists of Champagne accepting the gift of their charism from the Holy Spirit with what they can bring as gifts. I'm Mike Kreev. I am a married man from South Africa. I'm a father, I'm a grandfather, and I am Marist. I'm Tony Leon. I'm from Australia. I'm a Marist brother, and I am Marist. And we are Marists. Marists.